They're so mm-hmm. loud, and I'm like, so I'm gonna get hate messages probably. Perfect. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So <laughs> there's a there's a it's an unlimited comment box on YouTube. So yeah. Here's one thing that puzzles me about the archery industry. Yeah. Um, when you as a dealer mm-hmm. set up a bow, yeah, y- you don't get paid. In general, most dealers do not charge to build the bow. Uh, on a new bow that purchased here, correct. That's kind of the norm in the industry. Yeah. So when I go to O'Reilly's or mm-hmm. AutoZone and I buy a set of brakes, why doesn't why don't they come out and put the brakes on for me? It'd be super awesome. But I, that's a good question. We've had this chat before. Yeah, yeah, it's, that's what uh, up. yeah, it's it's a conundrum. It really is. I just don't want to see. I don't want to see shops go away. Um, yeah, more shops go away. It's yeah. been scary. I mean, there's some, uh, you know, uh, we're we're now a buy group member. I mean, so buy group shops are generally bigger shops. They have bigger, you know, bigger gross sales. They have they've been around for a while. There's been a lot of buy group shops going away. There's been a lot of top ten dealer shops going away. I mean, it's it's not just your small mom and pops that are leaving. Hey everyone, welcome to the Rod White Bow Show. This episode is all about, what are we going to do this one about? Crossbows, I think, right? Crossbows, Just went right. legal, yeah. Yeah, so the we're in the state of Illinois. Business of crossbows. The business of crossbows, and I'm on the fence about this, so yeah, this no. a good conversation. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I yeah. There's The two issues, as far as I see, are you know buying and selling crossbows and whether or not you should use them. So far, they're separate, but hmm. we're fresh here in Illinois. I know Iowa's kept them out all the way. Well, late muzzleloader, we have them. Do you? Okay. Which anybody who who has used one in late muzzleloader yeah. probably realizes that it may not be one of the better ideas. It's really cold. It's Well, it's nice because it's really cold, so you don't have to yeah. draw back. You yeah, know, yeah, and you're not yeah. holding a aluminum riser, but you know we make carbon bows now. Somebody does. Yeah, so you can yeah a couple of them out there. Yeah. yeah. So I don't really see a use for them. They're mm-hmm. so loud, and I'm like, so I'm going to get hate messages probably. Perfect. Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> there's a there's a it's an unlimited comment box on YouTube. So yeah, <laughs> hammer out what up. you want. Yeah, I'm good with it. I uh, uh, we are at Select Archery in Normal, Illinois. Normal. Yep. And uh, this is Daryl, and I always screw this up, and I just screwed up Lathrop's too because I call him Lathrop's <laughs> Steinin. Steinin. Oh, so close. So yeah. close. Yeah. He's used to me. I though. answered everything though. That's really <laughs> fine. Yeah. <laughs> but Daryl has one of the finest archery shops, no doubt, around. Um, well, he's been you. very kind to me. Very, very kind to me. Um, gives me free shirts. I like, yeah. I like, I like free pop when I shirts. come. Yeah. Yeah. Which I need to stop because I'm on the 60 day <laughs> training program. I got jerky. I'll eat some of that. Some I eat protein. pretty much anything you got there on the shelf, actually. Yeah. 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 And uh, he's got two. What the, the neat thing about Daryl is. He's got, in his shop, I, sh- I should say specifically, he's got two, not that you're not neat, but he's got two different ranges. Yeah. One that's open when he's open, which mm-hmm. has the shop itself in it with all the, um, your, your whole lineup, which Goodies, we'll go over. all that stuff over yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> it's more over there. <laughs> yeah. And then um, he's got another range that's a 24-hour mm-hmm. range, which is kind of becoming a little bit of a fad. Yeah. And so from a dealer perspective, it's a, it, it, it. <laughs> It makes total sense. I mean, it right? Works if you got the space right? for it, absolutely. Yeah, it, yeah. There, for a couple of reasons, it works really well. Because uh, one, everyone's on on my schedule. You know, what I mean, there's second shift guys, third shift guys. There's folks who put their kids to bed at eight o'clock, and I'm home with my kids. You know what I mean? So right. they have access to the range. The other thing is, uh, what we found after we opened it, we didn't really anticipate this. People are intimidated. They don't generally want to shoot in groups. You know, they don't. They don't feel like they're good enough, or they don't feel like you know. They, they just for whatever reason they're intimidated. And they'd rather shoot by themselves, or they'd rather shoot with their friends, or and you know, and not with a group of people they don't know. So, those are the folks that we see using the range the most. You know, I mean, folks coming in either just before or just after hours to to use the range kind of privately by themselves. And you've really maximized. I don't know which one you use at which time, but you mm-hmm. maximize your range time too. That range is, I think, that range is pretty much unless Rod's in there doing a podcast. <laughs> sure, it's pretty much always open to anybody. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If we're open during our open hours, that door's open, and we can we can use it either side. But yeah. this one, you maximize to do like birthday parties and three D like right? and stuff like that. Yeah, group lessons, stuff like that. Yeah. So I shot a three D with you last winter. Yeah. Um, yeah. You shot shooting end of our league. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, we had a good. I had a really good time. Yeah, it was a fun and, group, um, guys. That was, that's pretty cool to do too. I mean, yeah. so like in in the Midwest and and there's obviously lots of exceptions, uh-huh. but uh, in where I live in Southeast Iowa, there's leagues, but those leagues don't shoot all at the same time, which is sad right. because to me the whole 
concept of a league is that you're all shooting Shoot together, your buddies. Time. Exactly. Yeah, and that's something like, dude, hats off because that's I, it was really fun when I came yeah. in here and shot. It was with all your guys that normally shoot together, and yeah. I'd be kind of a little bit of a guest there. But there's anywhere from thirty to forty fun. guys jamming in there shooting at the same time. That for us, that was the the fun part. Like you said, that's the fun part of shooting with friends and, and getting right. together and kind of having that fellowship and that and that. I've shot in leagues before where you just kind of come in and pump in your score and you go and it's nice and you get to shoot, but I'd rather shoot with friends and just hang out. And, yeah. And we make it a partner league, so you you more incentive to come because you and your partner don't score if one of you don't show up. You right. Know? So you, you have to come or you're going to let your partner down. So. It's a cool. Uh, it's a cool format. Yeah. I, mean, I wish it was in more places in the Midwest, but I'm, you know, I'm sure there's pockets where it's really popular. Yeah. Especially yeah. out east where I grew up was a big deal. Cool. Yeah. But yeah. So let's talk about um, Sun. Couldn't have been Sunday. People don't work on Sunday in the government, do they? Yeah, it was Sunday. Really? Yeah. Yeah, no, there's yeah. a special session in right now because Illinois is about to fold like a lawn chair. Like, Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go bankrupt and gone altogether. Oh. So they've got this special ses- session, I guess, special session open um, to where they're working nonstop to get this budget done. But uh, there was a crossbow bill that was kind of left hanging May 31st when they went out of session that we didn't quite know what was going to go on with. So Slide it under with a pot here, pothole repairs right right <laughs> and it's kind of very so it, it had passed the the senate but it had to go back to the house for a vote and they couldn't do that because the session had ended they were gone for the summer because they, they need vacation somehow i don't get that either like right. why okay but anyway, well, that's, another, they, that's they, another podcast so i'm, I'm not yeah. to like stoke fires or whatever but i'm just mm-hmm. curious so like the, the president we just had yeah who was from illinois who yeah like was really proud of the city. He just he didn't move back, did he? No, no, no. That's no. so weird. It's yeah, smarter yeah. than we thought he was. <laughs> <laughs> so it's bad in Illinois right now. So if and you're you looking to move to Illinois, you can't knock on on Daryl because for knocking on Illinois because he right. lives here. So yeah, I don't have a choice. <laughs> and I got a business. Anybody needs a good archery shop in the area though that's out of <laughs> Illinois, um, the phone number is on the back of my shirt and <laughs> the web address. You send me a message. But uh, yeah, we're we're taking bids. Um, so so the crossbow thing. Yeah. So um, Sunday afternoon, it got passed uh, in the in the House. So they didn't have anything better to do, so they decided to vote on that. Um, it passed. So wonderful. So now crossbows are going to be legal. Um, it's currently right now as of, uh, what was it, uh, the 29th, 29th of June. Uh, it's currently not signed into law um, just because it's a mess down there with the budget and everything. Uh, if it doesn't get signed within 60 days, it becomes ratified on its own. So... The only way it can not go into law at this point is if it gets vetoed by the governor, and we don't we don't expect it to happen. So, so that's why the people are camped out on the front sidewalk right now, waiting for crossbows. Right? For crossbows. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we've been building crossbows feverishly, um, just in t- in anticipation of of this kind of boom that we're going to see. Everyone I've talked to, um, I have friends that own shops in other states, Wisconsin, Oklahoma, states that have gone legal from not being legal. Mm-hmm. Um, they've all told me the same thing. For that first year or two, they've sold more crossbows than verticals. Um, so, so something that bothers me a lot about crossbows, mm-hmm. um, was, there's a couple things, and I'm not anti-crossbow by any means, especially yeah. like for kids. Dude, what a great oh, way to absolutely. do Absolutely. Get them in the woods, get them involved. Yeah. yeah. So I'm not anti-crossbow, but um, there, there's a couple things. And one of the things that strikes my mind for the good of the industry to begin with, the mm-hmm. archery industry. Yeah. And and this is something like I asked, I, you know, I asked some guys in Wisconsin, we'll see what your response is. I already know what the, the results were, but yeah. it would seem to me, and there would be a concern that for archery pro shops who are there for the consumer to right. teach them how to shoot, to become a better shooter, Service help them base, work on yeah. their equipment. Yeah. Well, you sell a crossbow and... You don't need this anymore. You don't, you don't, yeah. I don't need the, these two You're, awesome ranges yeah. we just talked about. You're not here. Exactly, yeah. No, that is a concern. So so our hope is, and our and our kind of our educational focus with the crossbow is, and we're, we're hoping we're not going to lose a ton of vertical folks to the crossbow. We're hoping we're going to gain folks who, who didn't want to get into archery because of the time it takes to learn, you know. So... And I don't know if I'm just being uh, naive there or – but our hope is that we're going to pull some of the gun guys who didn't want to learn or didn't have time to learn the vertical stuff because it takes time. It's a long learning curve. You know what I mean? It's, right. you know, I mean, it's – you can just pick up a bow and be kind of accurate and wound deer. But to really learn it and to, to to be accurate and to be comfortable and to be confident, it takes time, you know. So um, that's not time everyone has, and we realize that. So our hope is that we're not going to lose all our vertical guys to crossbows. Um we're just going to gain more customers. I I don't yeah, know that I that's, that's going to be. I think you'll gain overall. You'll gain a lot more. Yeah, customers. Uh, yeah. It's gonna it's gonna make the the archery seasons more accessible for everyone. Sure. Well, and clearly, I mean, there may have been some shops that may have folded, mm-hmm. um, like in states like Wisconsin. But I don't. 
it's hard to say, you know, whether that was directly related to the crossbows or not. Yeah. One, one thing it's, that makes me think about that, though, is, like, these leagues we talk yes. about. You're having yeah. a lot of fun, and you're shooting with your buddies. And, yeah. Uh, I, there's no real need to practice no. anymore because – Unlike a, a a vertical bow, when you, when you cut that air, and you'll have to go to one of my <laughs> yeah. one of my seminars to understand this whole concept if you don't already. But yeah. once that release fires, you're still controlling where that arrow goes until that string right. leaves the knock or, or the, leaves the the serving. Yes, um, and there's no more contact. So with a crossbow, it's it's riding the rail. I mean, it's yeah. slim chance you're going to affect it from the time the the what I call lock time from the time the the sear is activated to. The time it's out of your control, yeah. Um, especially with a barrel, because with a bow, you, you, there's there's a you don't have just a straight rail it's riding, obviously. Mm-hmm. So yeah, no, it's floating between the string and the yeah. rest. Yeah, yeah. So um, the concept of I'm going to put the crosshairs on something and shoot it, and I'm going to hit where I'm aiming at. There, there are two things I think that's that's happened um, that I've seen personally in yeah. parks, especially uh, public lands, where they've allowed some crossbows to come in and for various reasons. Um, and I have seen an increase in yeah. woundings that I found. Mm-hmm. I, I think that what happens for some people who are not archery shooters to begin with, yeah, they they don't recognize the difference between the gun and the crossbow because sure. a, a gun kills by shock a lot of times. Yep. A crossbow doesn't. Yeah. So um, could maybe. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> You're really skittish, dude. Yeah. Really and skittish. there's another factor in there that a gun, a, a bullet leaves at 3,000 feet per right. second, depending on the gun. Right. But, um, it leaves... At 300 feet per second with a crossbow or yeah. a bow. Well, I should right. say that. There's some that are faster, I know. Four-ish is the top end. Right. Speed yeah. of sound is still 880 feet per second. Right. Roughly. Not to get all right. geeky. Right. So they'll, they'll go that fast if you don't put a bolt in them. Right. So if you, uh, in my experience so far mm-hmm. with a crossbow, I've shot at a couple deer. Now, I can, we're going to get in a whole ethical thing. I'm going to be very sure. careful about it. I'm treading yeah. lightly on this. <laughs> right. If a guy was to shoot at a deer yeah. at a longer distance, say 70, 80 yards-ish, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which I do not abdicate, actually, and especially with whitetails. Yeah, um, they're like ninjas. I, I might have known someone that has, sure. but at that kind of a distance, when that 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 crossbow goes off, there is a much louder noise that yes. is emitted from that crossbow. And yes. I know there are quieter ones out there. Mm-hmm. Even the quieter ones are louder than our modern modern vertical bows. Right. Yeah. Um, but I would also say that too, and, and I've always said this, and you can, for years that what causes a deer specifically to jump a string is not necessarily the sound of the the bow or the mm-hmm. device it's actually the sound of the arrow in I flight. agree uh, 1000 percent yeah yeah so um, you, with either one you could mm-hmm. have the same scenario unfold which is why I say with whitetails especially you really have to know your stuff you really have to build your bow you have to put your time yeah. in and practice if yeah. you're going to take longer shots and y- you really need to um, and I'm sure I have to be careful with this a little disclaimer but if a guy was to be downrange somewhere and listen to his arrows fly with his broadhead and vein combinations yeah we have a hallway here we do it yeah mm-hmm. yeah you got safety glass right here yeah and we have, you stand in the back of the hallway and you shoot on the range you can hear your yep. arrow yeah absolutely. so um that 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 is a, that is the biggest factor for me mm-hmm. in, in animals dropping moving out of the way that said an animal is an animal it moves it's yeah. it's not a target so that's that's a concern for me it's also a concern for me for a vertical bow for those who push the limits beyond right. what they're they're able to do and what they should do with their current setup yeah yeah um, Desperation will make you make some poor decisions. Yeah, yeah, and I think um, I think there's a huge opportunity. All that being said, for crossbows to open the door for folks to come into your shop who are normally mm-hmm. gun hunters and pick up a vertical bow. Yeah, well, even if they use a crossbow. Yeah, and we have seen that too. I mean, I talked to some guys down in Missouri who just went legal last year, I believe, mm-hmm. um, and they said that they saw the, the crossbow as kind of a gateway to the vertical bow for a lot of these guys too, because they they realize you know the nuances once they get out in the woods with a crossbow they realize that the limitations with a crossbow and they're hooked you know what i mean right. they, they you know they, they that gun is there's something less romantic about being that far away you know? well when you can see an arrow fly that's exactly I mean, that, you that's watch the, the project that's right. the witchery exactly. of archery in my yes. opinion oh yeah the, I mean, the mystical flight of the arrow you yeah. see kids shoot an arrow when they watch that first arrow fly even if it flies crooked sideways, sideways. It's easier like, to see Whoa. it's way yeah. easier to see when they're instant yeah. gratification yeah. we tune for that so they come out sideways <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you get special sponsorships right right <laughs> so um but i think um you know overall it, it may not be such a bad thing my instant gut reaction is it's really bad right uh, but again there are states that have proven that it's not so bad and again kids dude that's you know boy you know my kid uh, mm-hmm. my, my youngest aj yeah um he's not ready to shoot one with a vertical bow he no. shot a deer when he was five years old he's now almost eight 
Yeah. Um, he's not ready to shoot on the vertical mm-hmm. bow. He's a shorter kid. So, um, even if I, well, he just couldn't pull the pound. He's a little kid. Yeah. Um, is Iowa forty as well? Or are they forty five? I don't think we have a weight limit. Actually, really? I okay. could be wrong. Illinois is forty pounds. You got to have forty pounds. Well, he, 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 and even at that, I mm-hmm. you know, it depends on the efficiency level of the bow, the weight of the arrow, exactly. the broadage. Yeah. There's there's a yeah. lot of factors. Yeah. Um, but I would I would not put my son out there, even with a crossbow yet. A gun's one thing. Crossbow's a little bit different. Mm-hmm. Um, and I definitely won't put him out there with a vertical bow. So right. it it, right. it would happen first where I would put him out there with a vertical bow before a cross or excuse me a crossbow, crossbow before, before a vertical, a vertical. bow. Yep. yep. If he wants to shoot something with a bow, and he's totally down with that. So yeah. I'm cool with it. You know, if it becomes an opportunity. But oddly enough, I don't think you can shoot a crossbow at least as of a couple of years ago. You can't shoot a crossbow in youth season. But mm. youths can shoot a crossbow in late muzzleloader season, which is kind of a problem because it's dead gum cold for a kid. Yeah, 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 for sure. So, and know. last year in Illinois, they went legal. 18 and under could use it all year. Hmm. Last year uh, was the first year we saw that. So this year it's open for everyone, um, barring some catastrophic failure of our government. To, yeah, if we collapse, I don't know what the rules going to be. I just got <laughs> a parking ticket by going through Illinois. Or not a parking ticket, excuse me, a, uh, what do they call it? A toll ticket. Mm-hmm. Because I missed the t- I missed the first toll, yeah, which I didn't even know I missed actually. Um, the second one I, I saw coming, and I was like, "Dang it! I got to get in that lane. Couldn't get in that lane." Yeah. So now what do I do? Well, once you got through there, there's a message saying on the side, "I totally intended to pay the toll." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> dollar fifty, right? I'm like, so you they mail you a ticket, but you only have seven days to pay that ticket and only right. pay like a dollar fifty. Maybe it's a dollar ninety at the time. Yeah, yeah. Dude, I wasn't. The mail didn't even get to my house for seven days. <laughs> so I've gotcha. got $68 yeah. in tickets. Yeah, I don't think real. you have to pay it, though, because there's nobody there to get it. Oh, there, I don't know. Yeah, there's they, no state. It was a wicked letter yeah. they sent me. I guess I was scared oh, yeah. and paid it. <laughs> sure. Well, now, if, if you did, like, if you got it tomorrow, you're probably fine. I mean, they're probably not. There's, like, we're well, not going to have any government I called to try to pay it, yeah. and they, they wouldn't let me pay it because I didn't know what exit I went through. Oh. But I'm like, wait, you know what exit I went through. Right. You sent me a ticket. Right. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Sorry. No. I'm not <sighs> Illinois bashing. Jeez. Oh, I Actually, know. I like it's Illinois. Right. It used to be like the place to go. Yeah. The Golden Triangle. I and mean, then was... everybody went there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out not so much anymore. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. like, you know, so I'm looking at a lot, and we're getting totally sidetracked, yeah. ADHD issues. But so I'm I, I'm looking at, you know, the elk hunting stuff that I do, you know, yeah. back in elk hunting a lot. And it's funny because now I'm, I'm watching all these crazy CrossFit athletes, which, man, good for them. And, I, and I've got a 60 day elk program I'm starting. So it's, mm-hmm. you know, I, getting in shape is a good thing for yeah. sure. I mean, I'm yeah. definitely not in shape right now. I'm like 40 pounds heavier than you saw me last. Rounds of shape? Yeah. Um, <laughs> nice. Um, but so <laughs> there's a big effort or push for people to go in as deep as far as they can yeah. to chase elk, which is kind of comical because what happens is they just displace themselves and go back towards the truck. Right. So just sweet. Yeah. I found myself a lot closer to the truck than I expected to be last year yeah. because there were people way back in. I couldn't believe it how far I went back in there and there were people back in there. And I'm going, what the? Oh, yeah. And they're wearing good gear. They've got Kuyu stuff. They're, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm wearing, you know, I'm wearing Sika gear. And when you, when a, when a Sika guy meets a Kuyu guy up on a mountain, it's kind of like, huh. Yeah. You're just as into this as what I am, aren't you? <laughs> exactly. How long have yeah. you been here? Yeah. And usually they've been there as long as you have. Or they just arrived and they're planning on staying as long as they have to. So sure. anyhow, go back to the truck because there's less people there. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Go, yeah. But back to uh, um, the crossbow thing. You know, yeah. it would be interesting to see when those things start popping up. Maybe they already have in some states where they become legal out there. But that would be a, an oh, area of big concern, yeah. I would think, because the trajectory of it, the, the trajectory is, I, I think – Correct me if I'm wrong, but if you if you compared it to that, the drop rate ratio of a traditional arrow mm-hmm. to a crossbow bolt is considerably different, correct? Yeah, absolutely. And the and the bolt doesn't stabilize as well because it's short. I mean, it's just it, there's no flex, there's no spine. I mean, there is, but there isn't. I mean, there's a lot more pressure, but um, just that shorter bolt doesn't stabilize as well as it. So it drops off faster and it loses stability faster. So it starts to get squirrely. 60 70 yards instead of that 110 or whatever you, you can get your your vertical your longer 28 29 inch arrow out to yeah. so a couple of companies out there right now working on a crossbow and there's one gearhead's got one right now that shoots a full length arrow um i saw that last day say which is kind of a cool which is kind of a cool concept you know yep. because you're getting that speed and you're getting that power you're getting that force and you're also getting the stability from a full length arrow sure so. well and it's interesting too because as as we make th- those strides in there and they get become further down the progressive path mm-hmm. The, the argument right now of somebody saying, well, man, I don't think it's, man, crossbows shouldn't be allowed. Well, 
Right. Here's the funny thing about that, and I'll 100% um, go down this road too, is that w- what about bare bows? Mm-hmm. Because we came out with compounds <laughs> right. and releases, right? And, and there's still people <laughs> shooting bare bows. We've yeah, we've seen that. Life. We've seen that whole. Um, so like the traditional guys really got to get angry at the compound guys, and now I've seen this strange backlash from the compound guys really angry at the crossbow guys. <laughs> like, well, now they get to be the they get to be on the high horse. Because uh, the traditional guys got off the horse, and now the compound guys are on the horse. You know? <laughs> so we've seen this kind of strange progression of mine's better than yours, and um, and, and time will tell. You know, I mean, it's it's uh, they all have their advantages and their disadvantages. I mean, obviously the crossbow is just easier to use. It's easier to manage in cold weather situations. It's easier to manage if that deer's looking right at you, because you don't have to draw. You don't have to do. It's you're you're there. You're cocked. You're ready to go. Yeah. So it's much harder to get a second shot. I mean, which is hard to do anyway, but it's harder right. to get a second shot because, A, like you said, it's loud, and they're incredibly cumbersome to load. You know, Well, so dead gummit, soon they're going to be in the Olympics. and Oh, yeah. We get crossbows before compounds in the Olympics. You That's know what? Be- I don't care if a crossbow or a combo goes in the Olympics. Yeah. Either way, I'm going back, and I'm getting one of them silvers. Yeah. You, I have a full set. Yeah, then you get like, yeah, what is it, hitting for the cycle? Yeah, yep, I want you a full set. The cycle. Yeah. That's my goal. But I'm not going back with the recurve. <laughs> There's <laughs> synchronized swimming. <laughs> <laughs> Does it have to be an archery? I'm not going to wear a Speedo, dude. Oh, well, you could if you wanted to. There's people <laughs> shaking the door. <laughs> yeah, they're probably like, what? Yeah. We're, we're <laughs> flying helicopters. High. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Bush pilots. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, there's a 24-hour range pass. Mm-hmm. Yeah, buy one, one of those. Kid will watch it later on and be like, that guy's talking about me. <laughs> um, I think yeah. they just came from the gym, so they're fine. They didn't come out here just to be here. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so overall it's, I mean, I may sound like I started out pretty defensive on the crossbow thing, but I it's, don't, it's going to be interesting. I mean, it's gonna, from a sales standpoint, from a shop owner who sells archery equipment, um, we're going to see a two year boom in sales from and, what I can understand. And for, for, from what I understand, listening to a lot of dealers at the ATA show, the Archery mm-hmm. Trade Association last year, a lot of them are struggling. Yeah. So, you know, specifically in Illinois, I can't really say that. I know. Uh, you've told me you're doing really well, and clearly yeah. you're, you've expanded and things are going great it's, for you. It's yes, it's it's good. Do we, is it as good as it could be? We don't we don't know. You know, I know that archery as an industry is down dramatically over the last three years. You know, so but you're gonna get a shot in the arm with ease. Yeah, so absolutely. Everybody will. Y- yes. Yep. And yep. Uh, yep. that that's a good thing. I think you know any. I just don't want to see. I, I don't want to see shops go away. Um, yeah, more shops go away. It's yeah. been scary. I mean, there's some. Uh, you know, uh, we're we're now a buy group member. I mean, so buy group shops are generally bigger shops. They have bigger, you know, bigger gross sales. They have they've been around for a while. There's been a lot of buy group shops going away. There's been a lot of top ten dealer shops going away. I mean, it's it's not just your small mom and pops that are leaving. You know, it's so. Can we get in a little bit of economics real quick about yeah, dealers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tracy yeah. doesn't yeah. kill me. Your wife doesn't kill me. Yeah, yeah, yeah no. <laughs> That's <laughs> fine. She'll drive by right here. This big glass window. Sorry. Yeah, exactly. No, I'm working with a <laughs> customer. Um, <laughs> so. Here, here's one thing that puzzles me about the archery industry. Yeah. Um, when you as a dealer mm-hmm. set up a bow, yeah, y- you don't get paid. In general, most dealers do not charge to build the bow. Uh, on a new bow that purchased here, correct. That's kind of the norm in the industry, yeah. So when I go to O'Reilly's or... Mm-hmm. AutoZone and I buy a set of brakes, why doesn't why don't they come out and put the brakes on for me? It'd be super awesome. But I, that's a good question. We've had this chat before. We yeah. have. It's, uh, bring it up. Yeah, it's it's a conundrum. It really is. And there are some shops out there who do charge for setups. And yes, you there know, are. And they and they do well. You know what I mean? Lacrosse archery. Yeah. Uh, Anthony Schmidt up there. He uh, charges. You buy a bow, and I believe he, there's a, a chart. I don't know if it's 150 or whatever. Yeah. It is yeah. Bill. To yeah. Right. To so walk through. Yeah. The reality of it is, for you as a shop owner, and this is this is an industry problem. It's a mm-hmm. huge industry problem, mm-hmm. and it's why you see some of your shops disappear. And rewinding in time a little bit, at Matthews, we kind of tried to resolve some of this by qualifying dealers somewhat. Yeah. Um, And then we had dealers we were extremely loyal to when I used to work there. I remember going through all this. But uh, the the issue of not generating cash flow on top of the sale of a product. Like a lot of guys look at these bows and go, because we just, Tim... Chelsvik, yeah. we had a podcast in here yeah, a few yeah, months yeah. ago about this, about the the price of bows. Yeah, um, well, why should a bow be fifteen hundred dollars? I you know, I don't know. That, yeah. Not here to argue that at the moment, but you have to go to that podcast. The Thinking Woodsman, good guy. Yeah, um, yeah. If if you look at the the breakdown of a bow and where all the margins go to and come from, the dealer actually has a really small margin even yeah. today. Yeah, yeah. and Matthew's you, done the you bus have, 
yeah, you have to, in their category. You have to spend a grand to make two hundred, kind of a thing. You know what I mean? It's right. It's so, economically silly. I mean, you have to be thick in the head to buy a bow shop at these days. You know, so you have me, to love it. Yeah, you have to love it. And I want to break down the economics for yeah. people so they yeah. understand because it's 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 always, and I'm not uh, because I'm sitting next to here mm-hmm. to you, um, standing on this little podium kind of thing, I guess, or sitting on it. But the 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 issue that I see that's a giant one is you have overhead like every other place yep. like o'reilly's Absolutely. like yep. AutoZone. yep um you have inventory that you stock mm-hmm. and if you don't turn over cost yep. you money yep there's a, a number you can assign to that having been at gander mountain for a long time i know the the value of the cubic square inch mm-hmm. the cubic square inch of a product on a wall or on a shelf right which is ridiculous i i mean until i started you know really in an advisory <laughs> People position there calculate was that yeah. yeah it's crazy yeah um so you're a legit business, just mm-hmm. like everybody else. And Absolutely. So yeah. The funny thing is, is, and there are other industries, I'm sure, but archery is the one industry that I know because obviously I'm so entangled mm-hmm. in it, but uh, where where you don't get paid to install what you purchase, even if you go to a, a car dealership. Now, you might might be a bad example, but if, yeah. if you negotiate a deal on a car and you decide you want new tires on it, yeah. y- you're going to pay for the new tires and the installation. Right. Um, you might negotiate it before the sale, but after the sale, anything you want done after that is going to—it's an—it's an add-on. It's an expense. Exactly. So I just—not I, I, to justify what—and you're not mm-hmm. charging people really. Uh, well, you should, I think. <laughs> we, yeah, we've chatted about <laughs> we that. Talked yeah, about yeah. Well. yeah. I just um, there's not much of a margin. So to, at two hundred dollars, let me break this down for you. Yeah. If you take a bow out of the box, mm-hmm. what is your and our. I know the answer, but for the folks out there, and we haven't talked about this right specifically at the moment, but yeah. what is the time that it takes you from the time the box comes in, you grab it off the UPS truck, guy walks in shop, you spend on the average X amount of hours or minutes with a guy yeah. from start to finish, he chooses his bow, you pull it out of the box, you start putting it together. At what, what, what do you think the average time would take for you to get that bow into a satisfactory position? Now, I'm saying satisfactory, well, not rod white bow build, but right. No, they're they're shooting from from taking out of the box or to from selecting the bow to shooting in the center ish at 20 yards. Correct. Right. Okay. Um, Good yeah. enough to shoot a deer. Right. Kind of thing. Pie plate. Yep. Yeah. So um, spooky, honestly. <laughs> Pie plate. Yeah. Go yeah. ahead. Pizza. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, I could eat your pizza. So <laughs> I would like pizza too. Uh, what yeah. is that place called? We eat pizza. And that's pizza. It's uh, like DP dough. <sighs> DP dough with the yeah. calzones. It is so shiny bad. things. Sorry. Yeah. So so uh, so to do it right, and to, I mean rushing through it to do it right, you're at least at an hour. You, at least um, if you're taking your time with it, and you're really kind of in the customer's brand new to archery, and it, it could take two two and a half hours to really of of one on one work with a customer. And that's. Uh, Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's one-on-one meaning, like, assuming you don't have to help them actually shoot. That's, like, the, the process of oh, actually putting just in building a peep, the bow. building the bow. Yeah, what does oh, that take? 45 to an hour. Yeah. Okay, so, and then you've got probably an hour you spend with each customer, maybe? Or what do you what do you normally? It I depends on the customer. Some customers are, are shooting, and they're comfortable in 15 shots. You know, some, some customers, it's two and a half hours of shooting through the paper to... Why, why can't you make this bow perform properly? You know what I mean? Just, it depends on the customer. It depends on the issues we run into. But. So let's call it two hours, yeah. roughly, yeah, if that's, that's cool. Yep. That's $100 an hour. Mm-hmm. So if you have an employee, which I you know, you know how many employees you have but here, but if you have an employee, you, yeah. Yeah. Um, if you have an employee, you're pay- paying, mm-hmm. and maybe several, but if you have an employee, you're paying, take, uh, so right now you're sitting at, you're not really sitting at, how much profit are you sitting at at this point? If you make $200 on the sale of a bow, your margin, you're you're lucky to make thirty percent, thirty, okay. 30 points of margin. Yeah. Okay, so what would you say at at this point that you're sitting at, and how much money? And I'm not all brands are different, by the mm-hmm. way. So every, yeah, every company absolutely. has different some, levels. Yeah, some some offer better specific. margins than others, right? Yeah. And you, I believe most dealers at, or most most manufacturers have programs in which you're supposed to sell at a certain level or price. Right. Which the more you the more volume you do, the better your pricing and all that right. stuff. Right. Yeah. So for the average bow shop, um, you know they're making. Two hundred dollars in theory off the sale of a bow, mm-hmm. but you spent two hours. Yeah. So if you're paying a guy a decent wage at what fifteen bucks an hour? Twelve to fifteen. Yeah. Okay, so I'll we'll call fifteen. So there's mm-hmm. thirty bucks. Yeah. That you paid out for one hour because you're paying taxes. 
Yeah, yeah, yes. Taxes. So as an employer, as an employer, yeah. it costs you thirty dollars for a fifteen dollar mm -hmm. an hour guy. Mm -hmm. So you're at thirty bucks. Two hours is sixty bucks. So now you're left with uh, two hundred and no, one hundred and twenty dollars. One hundred and forty. One hundred and forty. Yeah. And I don't know. And you don't. I'm, I'm not asking for your shop specifically by any yeah. means. But most shops probably, I would guess, not and not your shop, but most shops probably would be lucky to sell a hundred bows a year. Would you say? That's yeah. That'd be yeah. So if you do math and all that, and I wish I had a calculator to spit all that out, but yeah, roughly a hundred bows, you make uh, one hundred forty bucks a piece. One hundred forty dollars a piece. Let's say one hundred twenty. That was the number we came up with. Sure. Or no, it was one hundred forty. Yeah. One hundred forty. Um, that's. Is that fourteen thousand dollars? Fourteen thousand. Yeah. That's a pretty good year. What's your electric bill here? Oh no, yeah, no, you can't be on that kind of stuff. <laughs> so you can't add, like. Lights and AC. You've got and lights, heat. AC, heating, especially in Illinois. Rent, you've got to heat the place. Rent. You've got rent yeah, you or got a payment. Rent, yeah. um, you've Lease, got yeah. improvements to the place. You've got, dude. dude. Depreciation. Yeah. It, the math old, isn't old there. Old stock, yeah. Yeah, old yeah. Stock. so my point is with all this, actually. So now we're looking at selling crossbows. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what the margin is on a crossbow. Roughly it's a thousand dollars. It's about the same. Yeah. So a crossbow, you slap together, put together. Dude, there's not. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but there's n no possible way that there's the tuning level that goes into <laughs> a vertical. Not bow, right? on. Right. No. It, the most you could work on a crossbow. I mean, you can you can have tuning issues just like a regular vertical bow, but the, for the most part, they don't come out. I mean, I. Yeah, they just don't. They don't need that kind of care. So from that perspective, actually, a crossbow is a really good thing. It's a faster sale. Yeah, by all means. that's a yeah. good deal. It, it's a 15, 20-minute sale. Yeah, yeah. it's just, uh, but you might not have league shooters. Is that What's going to happen in leagues right. this year if you have crossbows? Are you going to have a crossbow league? No, we're, we'll still have our regular vertical league. Um, I'm sure we'll have people asking to, to shoot their crossbows in the league. We might have a crossbow night if we have enough call for it. Um, just it, like now we have a traditional night. You mm -hmm. require different tar. and I don't know this actually, but you require different targets for a crossbow, or will they... They shoot the same ones. They just chew them up a lot faster, okay. you know. So it gets more expensive. So I, your crossbow shooters would have their own night, and it would be a more expensive league. There's got to be some shots target maintenance expensive too, though. That have targets. Um, st I mean, you've got solid rocks <laughs> mm -hmm. back there, but uh, I don't know what the length of a crossbow bolt is. But some of them probably disappear, like it disappear and lost. Yeah. So even really our solid rocks, which are top of the line targets, I mean, they're fantastic. Um, they bury the fletching. Yeah. On a 360 plus feet per second crossbow. So um, one of the things um, that I'm working on, hopefully get done mm -hmm. very soon. In fact, the elk, uh, elk training program starts on Monday. Okay. It's supposed to. Yeah. Dead gummit. I'm not. <laughs> a, I really thought I'd had it nailed, but I'm working on it. Yeah. Um, one of the things that's interesting about uh, as we go forward online, you can obviously access a lot of resources like Archery Talk and some other things. But mm -hmm. uh, and and John Dudley at Knock On TV, he's got one. So shout out to John because he's you know on the same path, obviously, but. Uh, what what do you feel about? We've talked about this. Mm -hmm. You know, got customer comes in and buys a bow, and you help get the basic setup done. Yeah, to so tune it to the level which I'm really happy with. Mm -hmm. um, dude, it's it's a three to four day process. It yeah, really we, is. yeah, we yeah we. You don't have the time to do that because now you're making like twenty cents. Yeah, in busy busy season, we physically just don't, we don't have enough hours in the day. Right. We don't have enough bodies to to do that. So it's something, and I'm and I'm and just be blatantly honest with me. So like, um, we did not talk about this before we came on here. So. Yeah, I don't, I don't so say. something like what what I'm doing or John's doing, we're we're mm -hmm. offering online education. Do you think that's that's going to be a trend or a good thing? I mean, I'm, we surely won't be the only two people that do yeah. it. But. No, I mean, education can never be a bad thing. I mean, it, there there I guarantee you there'll be shop owners out there who don't want to give away. You know our trade secrets, or um, you know the the tips and the tricks that we learn over years and years and years of working on these things. But it, it can it can be only only good. You know, what I mean, it, it's we, an I, educated consumer buys more stuff. Absolutely, they do. Yeah, and you raise the whole the level of the whole industry. You know, what I mean, if your low hanging fruit is much higher hanging, um, they're they're going to be buying more uh, high end gear rather than the low end gear. I mean, they're, it's, they're just going to they're going to realize potential of the equipment they're buying. You know, what I mean, and then right. potentially buy more equipment because of it. You know, so it, it can only be a good thing to have as much education out there as possible, especially and and, uh, and the same thing. I don't want to step in it here, but like. 
quality education. You know, there's a lot of bad information out there. You know, mm-hmm. there's a lot of scary information. You mentioned Archery Talk and sites like that. And they're Not that there's not good people on Archery Talk. Absolutely. There's some really, really good people on Archery Talk. And I learned a lot on Archery Talk early on, you know, when I just started doing this. And it was, Archery Talk was young yet. And, and, and there's a lot of, you know, that's kind of a, you know, a stepping stone, you know. And, and if you don't have access to a Rod White or somebody who knows what they're doing, it's it's your only option. But you really have to be careful because there's there's bad information out there too, you know, and there's... There's scary information. There's information that gets you hurt. You know, and that's right. the thing that, that scares us a little bit. But um, so just make sure your sources are, you know, vetted. You, you know who you're talking to. You know what you're looking at. You, you give it the eye test. You know what I mean? If, it's, if it looks a little too good to be true or hokey, or, then, you know, it's dig a little deeper. But Well, and I didn't bring it up for any other reason other than just um, – I. I, I kind of want people, like a lot of things I do on my, you'll see, uh, mm-hmm. like some of mine are, I, I show some slow motion videography. Yeah. Um, and it, it certainly was not to pick on any bow brands whatsoever. I had two sure. side by, I just picked two of the most popular. Yeah. Um, kind of caught a little bit of flack for that, but yeah. it, I, it wasn't, there's no, I'm not trashing anybody's stuff at all. There's just two different philosophies on knock travel with mm-hmm. two different companies right there I highlighted. And the whole goal is to get people to think about the process that's happening, the relationship between a bow and an arrow, which I'll go into sure. a lot more in depth later on as I, as I grow and kick this information out. But as a, I, I kind of wanted to do this mostly because we've got a major issue here. I shouldn't say an issue, not in a good way or a bad way. It's just a major issue that came up with crossbow sales now. Yeah. And I don't know that people really completely understand the, the financials behind a shop. So that's why I thought, you know, this would be kind of a cool one to do a podcast on mm-hmm. to explain yeah what what is it because tim and i talked about a little bit in his podcast chelsvic yeah. at the thinking yeah. woodsman and we talked a little bit about the prices of bows and how they got there and there's marketing dollars that you can you can go back to that podcast and listen to it but yeah there's a lot of things in there but the thing um that i was just trying to i thought i'd hopefully accomplish with this and i don't know maybe i upset a bunch of people i don't know hopefully not mm-hmm. weird if i did um You've never upset anyone <laughs> no. Rob. i know yeah i'm sure the comments <laughs> be flying everywhere but yeah uh, it's tough i can take it because sure. it doesn't leave a mark when it hits you too well you don't know how to read <laughs> so like if you don't know how to read you can't read the anyway, I, go ahead um <laughs> so i just thought it'd be kind of cool just to explain to people like so you know where how, where does the money flow like how does right. it work out because right. daryl's in here you're in here is it uh, at times seven days a week i think yeah absolutely yeah and dude All there day, every day yeah. there are times when you, if you come in here after july 4th mm-hmm. get a ticket because you're going to be standing it's, in line. It gets busy. Yeah. And if you come in here on April 1st, I don't know, you can hang out all day and probably, right, you know, right. it's, you're, you're right. less likely to encounter another hunter in the shop probably than <laughs> right. you are in the mountains of Montana. So Sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And the tournament season's turning on, but yeah, it's, it's, yeah. yeah. So there's, there's a lot of dynamics in there. So think about that, I guess, just as a, and I'm not advocating for any, I mean, obviously I've got a a good buddy here who mm-hmm. owns a shop. He's been really good to me. Um, I, I'm not taking sides for anybody, but as we grow and we get more internet opportunities out there for yeah. people, it's it's going to be an interesting marketplace to see uh, places, you know, uh, expand or unfortunately digress. But at the same time, it's you can look at other industries like the auto industry. You can buy a set of brakes online. So why doesn't there, why isn't AutoZone closed? Right. So they're still out there. Um, I think the cool thing about an archery shop is you have a sense of and I, you definitely do here at Select, honestly. Um, mm-hmm. When you walk in the door and there's people here, I mean, I, I know a lot of the guys and gals now. But when I walk in, it's, you know, it's a sense of family kind of here. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. Brett's always in it. here right away. Uh, yeah. <laughs> jabbing him, he's jabbing me back. He usually yeah. gets me first. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he's got and, longer arms. Yeah, and you got Aaron and you got Nate and... Um, JT I, and all. I'm the whole yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. it's really kind of cool. And yeah. to me, um, shops, will, I don't think they'll ever really go away. But Right. For that reason. I mean, th- there's definitely... Not as strong as they once were, you know what I mean? Because there's more options. I mean, consumers right. have more options. Prices are more transparent than they've ever been, you know. I had a gentleman the other day who price checked right at the counter. I mean, just right in front of me. Just found it on Amazon and walked out the door. You know, I mean, it, it happens. And it's absolutely going to happen, you know. But um, all we can do is offer the best service we can offer, you know, yeah. and give them a reason to, to you know, to, to utilize the shops and to support small business. You know? Yeah, and I think that guys like that a lot of times they'll, they'll come around too. Honestly, yeah, you know, yeah, and uh, they get he, tired of paying thirty dollars to have a site bolted on. Yeah, he gets his bill from Amazon. He can't figure out a tune. He's right. come back in, and then you're going right. to hammer him. No, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, a lot of shops do. Yeah, uh, it, it, absolutely. Yeah, I've seen I've seen that number go up dramatically. Well, I, I have started a site 
for shop owners just because we all run into the same issues. You know, right. so we've got a Facebook page, a private page just for owners and managers, and, and we see the same thing in every shop across the country. We really yeah. do. Things evolve. Yeah. I mean, yeah, and this the, our industry is evolving right now. Yeah, so this podcast mm-hmm. started out probably like me talking about gloom and doom with crossbows. Yeah. But, uh, I think hopefully by now everybody's caught on that I wasn't trashing anybody. Yeah. I'm just – or industries or parts of the industry because yeah. it's all – we're all still growing. I mean, Absolutely. we've got the archery in the yep. schools program uh, growing, mm-hmm. um, and there's huge opportunities out there for retailers. And yep. um, S3DA is huge. Yeah. We've and got our S3DA old. team jamming. I mean, it's, yeah. It's yeah you have your own team, right? Yeah, we have that. Yeah, they opened up last year for clubs, which shops, clubs. Um, it wasn't just schools anymore, so that really made it more accessible for us to have a team and to compete. And we can compete against other shops and other clubs. And, and it's been a riot. It's been a blast. I mean, it's. Yeah. I think, you know, things will get better. Mm-hmm. And I don't think they ever really got that bad for those who could adapt. Right, like any other but that's just it. Yeah, if you can't, if you if you're not changing and you're not looking for that niche and looking for those, you know, opportunities, then you're, you're going to fail. I mean, you're right. going to go away. Well, dude, um, you've been a, a tremendous friend and a huge asset to me building a lot of the stuff that I'm building. Even yeah. though I've oh, got a little ways that. to go yeah. with some of it, but yeah. um, select has been. Daryl's been very kind. Him and his wife both. His wife had put up with me at the house, <laughs> staying there a couple times, but. Um, been very kind to me and i really appreciate it yeah no and, absolutely uh, man yeah there's yeah. there's some other great shops out there by all means mm-hmm. mike's bow shop by my place is great lancaster yeah. archery has been you know good to me since i've come back to the sport and so there's there's a lot of really good shops yeah. and i would encourage you uh if you're someone who is youtubing it and figuring out how to tune their own bows and even mm-hmm. if you bought one of my bow schools or you chose not to whatever i would encourage you to go into a local shop if you can find one and You'll know when you get in a good shop. I and mean, there's some yeah. good ones and bad ones. Yeah. And just, um, like any, just like every other industry and every yeah. other pr- profession, there's there's folks who really, really care, and there's folks who, you know, just don't as much. You know? Yeah. But but it will save you a lot of time. It Absolutely. really will. I mean, yeah. uh, yeah. you know, part of the reason I'm doing my online classes is because uh, just logistically getting to people Well, that's yeah. tough. And, and we see that a lot. There's uh, There are fewer and fewer archery shops in the country, especially out west, where there's yeah. just vast, vast Two guys tracks. shot with me from Wyoming at the ASA yeah. a couple shoots ago. Three hours, four hours away from the I closest shop. five or six. They, it's crazy. Their Casper somewhere. It's crazy. And we don't see that here in the Midwest because there's a shop. There's more shops, and there's just more densely populated. Well, you right. get west. I mean, you can go two hours without seeing a town. I mean, yeah. it's, it's crazy. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's it, cool. Yeah. There's there's definitely a need for what you're providing. I mean, it's, yeah. So, there's there's a lot of resources, um, and there's a lot of organizations you can turn to, and mm-hmm. I would just encourage somebody. I mean, really, to, to make the, the physical contact with someone into, in a shop and, and meet that yeah. family atmosphere, which I'm sure exists in almost every shop. Absolutely. It's, it's a cool deal. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I encourage, I mean, even if you're looking at crossbows, um, encourage you. I mean, look at all of them. We'll see what mm-hmm. fits you best. But Shoot them all. You'll be happy to walk into a pro shop, I think, um, like Daryl's, and uh, treat you good. I, yeah. I, I, I very rarely do I ever hear anymore. It used to be you heard some horror stories, but rarely do you ever hear horror stories anymore about archery shops. A yeah. lot of them are very family friendly. I think they kind of weeded themselves out. Yeah. Yeah, the bad ones. That'll yeah. probably continue if there's a mm-hmm. few left there. So. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Yeah, it was a pleasure. It was fun. Let me have you on, however that works out. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, yeah. Uh, hey, welcome to my show. <laughs> the Daryl Show. <laughs> right. The R&D Show. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, we'll be dancing later. Yeah. So we're going to uh, – I'm going to try to carry out some more information out of okay. Daryl's range, and uh, i got to let him go before his wife, Tracy, puts the smack down on me. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's probably on her way right now. That's what's lighting up on your yeah. watch, yeah, probably. Absolutely. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> I've got a danger thing going off on my... No. Right. She's a, uh, she's awesome. You guys just had she's a kid. Awesome. Yeah, she's yeah. she just turned one. Wow, that's crazy. She's a little monster. That's yeah. crazy. She's so awesome. So come into uh, Select Archie, check out Daryl's shop, yep. and uh, learn a lot more than you probably ever thought you could learn about yeah. bows and arrows. Yeah. We're a decent uh, shop. Yeah, meet the whole crew here. Yeah. Especially Brett. Ask for Brett. Ask for Brett. It's <laughs> Thursdays. Yeah. Peace <laughs> out from the Rod White Bow Show. See you. Hey everyone, Rod White here, U.S. Olympic archery gold medalist, professional bow hunter, guide and outfitter, host of the Rod White Bow Show and the Deer Society podcast, and I've got an incredible opportunity for you today. I'm launching my first ever online class, and this is a class built around general fitness, but most importantly, for those of you who live in lower elevations here in the Midwest or down south or out east, you already know probably that we're at an extreme disadvantage whenever we go to chase animals at high elevations out west. Regardless of whether you're going out west or not, this program will have a tremendous amount of benefits in your fitness level overall. It'll improve your mood, I guarantee it. 
get you on a better track for your diet and help you become a better bow hunter overall and also teach you a few things about building your own bow. This course is a beta training program, which means in exchange for your valuable feedback that I'll be using to help better construct future courses, I'm offering this to you at a very low price that I probably will never offer again. Additionally, I'm also going to be giving away 50 extinguisher game calls to the first 50 people that sign up for the class. That will also come with an instructional DVD where I teach you how to communicate with mature whitetails and give you tips and tactics that will help you fill your freezer this fall when you get back home from the mountains. So sign up today and let's get training together.